In January, the Friday before Dr. King's birthday, we will, um, in the afternoon, all high school students will be sitting in a room somewhere with their Promethean board. Like Seattle is here. Yeah. Um, like it was everywhere. Seattle traps. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That was what that was. And it was this anonymous thing where people could go on and they're anonymous. So, so is that something that's still going on? No. I'm kind of adding on to what she was saying. Um, I realized a while ago that we learn about like slavery and things like that in like fifth grade, and then from then on we just kind of like get the overview. But in fifth grade, they're not going to tell you like the cruelty and the things that actually happened, and so it's like people don't let that sink in because they never learn about it ever again since fifth grade and like things like Black History Month, Hispanic History Month, like all of those things are just like, oh, we talked about it for one day and we move on. But we never learn about the difficulties and the things that come along with being of that heritage. It's always just like, oh, here's one day and then we kind of move on. And it's actually ridiculous because that sort of mindset even, that sort of action even like strengthens the mindset. I was saying where segregation in communities where minorities are segregated together to put into lower funded schools so then they have a less or a better academic chance to be able to gain power and be able to improve their situation. And I feel like that's a larger situation than even the, I mean the police brutality of course is very important, but I'm saying that there's, lar there's larger issues at hand that can be dealt with for racial equality. That should be highlighted. Absolutely. Where is that? I'm hoping for a couple of we acknowledge we are gathered on the ancestral lands of the Muckleshoot Indian tribe, who historically lived throughout the area between the Cascade Mountains and Puget Sound.
for it. I left India more convinced than ever before that nonviolent resistance was the most potent weapon available to oppressed people in their struggle for freedom. The way of acquiescence leads to moral and spiritual suicide. The way of violence leads to bitterness in the survivors and brutality in the destroyers. But the way of nonviolence leads to redemption and the creation of the beloved community. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., March 1959. Dr. King envisioned a beloved community, but can we still be a beloved community separated by fear? Can we still be a beloved community separated by hate and misunderstanding and distrust? Separated by screens and politics? Separated by trauma, depression, and anxiety? Can we build a beloved community while so many of us do not feel loved? How do we build a beloved community while so many of us do not feel loved? The wound of trauma is one that is everlasting. As its blade cuts me down and its fires burn me. As it floods my world and leaves me suffocating, it seems like it's endless. These wounds, just like physical wounds, are deep. I heal from trauma by talking about it. I have learned that for me personally, I have to talk about traumatic things, otherwise they just eat me up inside. So talking about them and giving myself time to heal and being patient with myself. But it doesn't just disappear. You learn how to live with it. You can't change the past, only the future. Now each of you is in the process of building the structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence. 
in your various fields of endeavor, you're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. And once you discover what it will be, set out to do it and to do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, that doors are opening to each of you. Doors of opportunity are opening to each of you that were not open to your mothers and to your fathers. And the great challenge facing you is to be ready to enter these doors as they open. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are.
Never succumb to the temptation of becoming bitter. As you press on for justice, be sure to move with dignity and discipline, using only the weapon of love. Let no man pull you so low as to hate him. In your struggle for justice, let your oppressor know that you are not attempting to defeat or humiliate him, or even to pay him back for injustices that he has heaped upon you. Let him know that you are merely seeking justice for him as well as yourself. Yes, I know we need to work towards change. I know we need to help make this world and our school better. But I also know we're so tired right now. We're back in the classrooms and back in the halls, but I sometimes feel like we're ghosts. And I'm trying to remember how to exist in this version of normal. There was a reckoning and a chance to restart, but people are still dying. People are still being killed. And the evidence of changed hearts and Black Lives Matter, marches have faded and washed away. And COVID is still preying on the vulnerable while so many people are asking for justice and demanding apologies. And I'm sorry, but sometimes I can't help but feel like I need an apology too. For everything that was taken away, opportunities lost, promises unfulfilled, and deferred dreams, deferred again and again. I want an apology for the consequences of decisions made without my permission, an apology for the people who have taken, who have been taken away from me. My heart aches for an apology that I will never hear. My heart aches for an apology that I will never hear. I want an apology. I want an apology from my dad for making me black. I want an apology from my dad for making me black, but marrying a white woman, so I'm not quite black. I want an apology from my dad for making me black, but not quite black, but teaching me about black culture, but not enough for me to be black. I want an apology from my mom. I want an apology from my mom for making me white. I want an apology from my mom for making me white, but marrying a black man so I'm not quite white. I want an apology from my mom for making me white, but not quite white, but giving me education and good housing and vocabulary, but not enough for me to be white. I want an apology from the world. I want an apology from the world for making me mixed, but not quite mixed. Because according to the world, my skin color means I'm black. I'm gangsters and Jordans and rough neighborhoods. But because of my voice, I'm white. I'm a college degree and a doctor or a lawyer. I want an apology, but still, I apologize. I apologize for acting white around my black friends and family. I apologize for acting black around my white friends and family. I apologize. My heart is searching for an apology for more than a year of isolation, more than a year of feeling like I need to shout and march to be heard and seen, more than a year of lives lost in preventable ways. My hearts ache for the apology that I will never hear. We all deserve an apology, but I may never get the apology I deserve from those I need it from, but do know what I need to hear. If I speak them to myself, will it help me to forgive? Dr. King wrote, what then is forgiveness? First of all, it's a pardon. It's a fresh start, another chance, a new beginning. Second, forgiveness is a process of life and the weapon of social redemption. We are to go out with the spirit of forgiveness, heal the hurts, right the wrongs, and change society with forgiveness. Of course, we don't think this is practical, but this is the solution.
these past months of uncertainty, people were helping each other, sometimes quietly, often in unseen ways, but they made all the difference, and I'm grateful. I want you to be able to say that day 
that I did try in my life to call those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a well song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. What's up, crew? Uh, I'm back. Uh, I just, you know, first and foremost, just want to say um, that I'm grateful to be sharing this moment with you and to uh, be sharing this time with all of you. Um, the past few years have been challenging on all of us in various ways. And uh, the question that was posed to me was, how do we heal? And to be honest with you, I don't know if I have an answer that um, that is complete or that will suffice. Um, but there are a few things that I do know. In order for us to move forward in anything, you have to acknowledge where you are and how you got there. And I know for me personally, that last part can be challenging and has been challenging. But it's necessary sometimes to remind ourselves who we are and what we've overcome, because there's hope in that, there's strength in that, and I do believe that there's healing in that. Because tough times are inevitable, but better days are ahead, and we have to have faith in that. And remember this, as evident by the sacrifices of those who have come before us, like Martin Luther King, who fought for us even before we were born, you are loved, and there's nothing that love can't do. So I just wanted to say thank you again for um, just let me share uh, my heart with you all. Um, and I hope that you all are doing well. Uh, I pray that not just for you all, but for our world, that uh, we may experience true joy, um, love, and well-being. Uh, and I wish that for you all as well. So take care of yourselves um, and see you around. In order to rebuild that bridge that was burnt, you need to clear all the broken pieces. The charred, brittle boards of trust that were burned away by the fires of betrayal, hatred, and fear. Once you clear that, you can move on to replacing those precious parts that allow that bridge to form once again. The blueprint for your newer bridges may be different from your older bridges. Outdated designs can lead to miscommunication. Trying to rebuild that bridge can be a little awkward when you aren't on the same page. Maybe today it's not about building a perfect bridge. It's not about having all the answers or agreeing on everything. And maybe today it's just about showing up. After more than a year being separated, building a beloved community starts with showing up and whatever we are able today. And in the dark, we need to show up for ourselves as much as we show up for others. We've all been hurt over the course of these past two years. And now, as we emerge from our isolation, it feels like everyone is asking so much of us. And the world is looking to us to blaze a new trail into the future. But it's important that we don't get so overwhelmed that we stay stuck where we are. Tomorrow, or the day after, we can start working on the future. But today, let's just show up.
King said that faith is taking the first step when you cannot see the entire staircase. Today I propose that we commit to two things in the spirit of Dr. King. Number one, we show up for ourselves. Number two, we show up for someone else. We can worry about the rest tomorrow, but today I will show up and do one kind thing, one fun thing, one supportive thing for myself so that I have practice to show up with one kind thing, one fun thing, and one supportive thing for someone else tomorrow. And I can be intentional about showing up for someone who I really know needs it today. Can y'all do that? Today I will do one thing to remind myself that I'm beloved. I will do one thing to remind others that they are beloved. And so we will be a beloved community. Two steps toward turning Dr. King's vision of the beloved community into a reality. It is this that I will show up for our beloved community. Today, I will show up for myself. I will do one thing to remind myself that I am loved. Today, I will show up for others. I will do one thing to remind others that they are loved. of you. 